Hello again. Uh, I'm here with another video uh, related to the kinetics of rigid bodies. A very simple problem where this flywheel is rotating about its center of gravity point G under the action of a constant force. So this 100 pound force is a constant force. And um, it's a, uh, this uh, flywheel has a uh, radius of two feet. So uh, let's say uh, if we know we are given that that the mass moment of inertia of this flywheel uh, with respect to its center of mass, I bar or I sub G, say I just pick a number here, 50, and the unit is kind of unusual, pound, foot, second square, which is the same as, by the way, as its logs, uh, uh, feet squared. Uh, you know that the slug is not used that much uh, in problems. Uh, anyways, uh, the metric version of that would be kilogram meter squared. So let's say the mass moment of inertia of this flywheel. Remember, the mass moment of inertia is a measure of resistance of the body, of the rigid body, to rotational acceleration. So what do we want to find here? So we have this flywheel. Uh, uh, rotating due to this constant force and we want to let's say find the number of revolutions this flywheel will go through in say three seconds okay so we notice that actually for us to find the number of revolution which is actually theta here and actually we end up getting it in radians uh, unit of radians, uh, which is dimensionless, but we can change it to number of revolutions, just a quick uh, conversion. Anyways, um, we notice that we need alpha. We need alpha to do this. So let me go ahead and draw a free body diagram for you here. Notice that I didn't even give in the weight of this guy. All I needed was the mass moment of inertia. So we know that this guy has certain weight, so I'm going to show the weight of it, W. And we do have uh, reactions at the bearing. So we have a reaction G sub X and G sub Y, right? In the X and the Y direction, right? And obviously they are not that important to us because we're not going to calculate those. Our objective is to find alpha. So now we know that our main equation is gonna be taking moment about the center of gravity and set that equal to I bar or I bar G times alpha. And since the rotation is clockwise due to this force, obviously we take that to be positive. So very simple equation, the torque that this force uh, generates about point G is just 100 pound times two feet. And that's equal to I sub G, which I gave you to be 50. So this is a quick calculation, 200 divided by 50, alpha becomes four. And if you keep track of the unit, this should be radians per second square, or one over second square. Remember, radians is dimensionless. So now, this alpha happens to be constant since this force is constant. Therefore, if alpha is constant, uh, we know that for constant angular acceleration, one of the equations that we can use is theta equal theta zero plus omega zero t plus one half alpha t squared. So, we know theta sub zero is zero, omega zero is starting from rest. So theta is gonna be one half, alpha is four, and we set time three seconds. So this becomes uh, 18, unit should be radians. And just one quick conversion, 18 radians, uh, two pi radian is one revolution. So if you divide 18 by two pi, you should get a theta of about 2.86 revolution. So in three seconds, this guy will go only uh, through almost three revolutions because it has a, it's heavy, has a uh, large mass moment of inertia. So its angular acceleration here is not that large actually. Uh, so as you could see, this was a very simple example. Hopefully I'll come back later on uh, uh, with more uh, examples of kinetics of rigid bodies. Thank you again for listening and watching.